Order up. Caribbean Kitchen foods offer seven unique blends of premium, low sodium Jamaican seasoning that will add a burst of flavor to your dishes. Our authentic all natural Jamaican seasonings are a game changer when it comes to adding a burst of flavor to your dishes. Our products are kosher, all natural, contains ingredients that are gluten free and GMO free. Our seasonings are handcrafted with the highest quality ingredients. We source our ingredients from the Caribbean to capture the authentic taste of the islands. Unleash your creativity in the kitchen and savor the taste of the Caribbean with our spice blends. Enjoy our variety of seasonings that are flavor packed to deliver the best taste for your dishes. Get ready to create delicious meals that will excite your taste buds and leave your guests asking for more. Try our exclusive curry and jerk seasonings for an extraordinary cooking experience. Our blends are an excellent choice for chicken, meat, fish, and vegan dishes. Add a burst of flavor to your cooking with our top quality Jamaican seasonings. Grab one of our bundles and enjoy the taste of the islands.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Family, whoo, today is the day. <laughs> Man, it's hard to believe, family, I'm telling you. Wow, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And family, I, I got something to share with you today, <laughs> family. I, I thought today was going to be, uh, I knew that today was going to be special, but I, I didn't realize, family, that, you know, the most high, you know, kind of level set today for me. And I, I'll share that with you in just a moment. But we'll we'll just give it uh, just a few more minutes, family. And I guess since we're here, family, if you could please just give me a one in the chat if my audio sounds OK, family. I just want to make sure that everything sounds OK uh, before we get started. So if you could, please just put a one in the chat, if you don't mind, Ms. Pekka, if everything sounds OK. All right. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I told her, told her, told her, which means thank you in Hebrew. I see a bunch of ones in the chat. All right. Well, hallelujah, man. Ooh, I'm telling you, family, uh, this coming from somebody who who looks at a lot of history and, you know, history will, will put stuff into perspective and history will show you why certain things are so, so, so important. Like, you know, when you look at t today and you look at the the the, the Aleph and the Taf <laughs> being written across Babylon, the daughter of Babylon, and you realize the journey that we've been through been through just to get here and you also realize family the hope that our forefathers had to be here at this moment now again i just want to re reiterate we don't know what's going to happen you know my personal uh thoughts family is that i don't really expect a whole lot to occur to occur today other than just you know this omen to be completed across the across the united states and bear with me just for a second let me make sure my phone is muted all right but just want to make sure uh family that um yeah i mean as far as my expectations family i don't really expect a whole lot i know that there's some folks out there that's that's a, uh that are are expecting some things to happen but you know i just say be cautious of that family of getting your expectations too high um at the very least family just know that this is the mark this is the mark and based off of the scripts, you know, uh, Yahushua is not too far behind. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So like I said, family, we'll, we'll just give it a few more minutes before we get started. Uh, I do have a couple of some live feeds that we can tap into just to see what, you know, what's going on going on around us as we kind of move through our uh, our lesson today. But let's let's uh, like I said, just give it a few more minutes, family, and we'll get started. And uh, let me just uh, what I'll do, family, I'm going to start off by. Uh, going through a couple, a few more commercials. Also, family, if you are in the path of totality, in other words, if you're in like, let's say Texas, for example, uh, if you don't mind, just type that into the chat, because if you're in the in the path of totality and you don't mind sharing your, you know, your experiences and and just giving a brief uh, uh I can ask a summary of your expectations now that this mark is being written across the U.S. So basically, like, again, family, if you don't mind, you know, calling in or what I'll do here in a moment is once we get started, I'll drop the the plan is, is to drop the StreamYard link into the chat. And like I said, if you feel if you feel up to it, family, hop on, just give a, a, a brief um, summary of of your expectations like what are your expectations once this tav once this aleph and this tav gets written across the across the u.s we just want to get your thoughts on that family so we'll get we'll get to that here in a moment oh, i see 82 percent in north carolina really wow all right well praise the most high well let's get let's uh <laughs> let's move this right along so that we don't miss it so hang on family let me go ahead and just drop these uh, other commercials and then we'll uh, we'll get started here shortly all right here we go family African Israelites, a law-abiding family of Israelites peacefully attempting to live in the lands of their captivity. And then there's the black Hebrew Israelites, a creation of the Confederate, a modern day makeover of the African Israelites reimagined as an evil, violent villain. 
rampaging through the streets, taking the lives of the innocent, committing heinous acts of hate at every opportunity. Or at least that's what they want you to believe. Even when the crime was committed by a white man. whom the ADL's Jonathan Greenblatt blamed on black Hebrew Israelites. Proverbs chapter six, verse 16 reads, These six things doth Yahuwah hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. Proverbs 12, verse 22. Lying lips are abomination to Yahuwah, but they that deal truly are his delight. Proverbs 13, verse 5. A righteous man hateth lying, but a wicked man is loathsome and cometh to shame. You see, family, lying is even addressed in the Ten Commandments. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 16 which reads thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor this serious offense can even cause one to burn in the lake of fire revelation chapter 21 verse 8 reads but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. inside the room. It's reading right, man, look. Well, you're not reading it right. Five meters, man. Four. What the hell? Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Give me the light. All right. All right, family. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What an, a great and awesome day it is today. Hallelujah. Well, well, actually, I'm going to uh, share my screen here because I was going to go open my slides here, but I'm, I'm actually I have a couple of screens going and I see where the uh, eclipse is. I just want to bring bring everyone up to speed of where where everything stands right now. So let me just see if I can share my screen. Hang on. See if I can figure this out. All right, let's do live stream. We're gonna do a live stream from uh, date time. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna move my, uh, there we go. All right, so hopefully you can see that and I will maximize this. And let's see. Okay, good. All right, so it's, it's maximized on your screen. So basically family, what you can see here, this is just a, a, uh, a live illustration of where the eclipse is. Right now, it is um, the, mo <laughs> the most highest ink pen is moving across Mexico. 
so this is uh, what you're looking at is uh, totality, you know, as far as the eclipse is concerned. So you can see that it is running like a freight train straight towards uh, Dallas, Texas. So straight towards Dallas, Texas. And then let's do this, family. I am going to. Uh, hang on. So let's. I'm just going to switch back over here to here just real quick, family, just to give up a, a uh, some administrative stuff uh, out of the way. So just a FYI, uh, for those of you all who have uh, completed the um, uh, the petition, <laughs> I was going to say survey, uh, uh, completed the uh, petition. Thank you so much, family. Uh, for those of you who still want to complete the uh, petition, feel free. Uh, we're going to leave that out there for another week before we send that out to the uh, Department of Justice. And I know, family, I know I'm kind of torn as well because I can see we can see every all the signs are in front of us. I mean, the most I can come back. I mean, uh, it, as far as I, I know, in my limited understanding, uh, you know, Yahushua could come back very soon. Right. And uh, this thing could be a wrap very soon. Or at the very least, Babylon, the daughter of Babylon, could be uh, judged very soon. But at the but at, at the same time, family, we have to we don't really know. We don't really know how um, oh, we got a phone call coming in. We don't really know how long the most high is going to tarry. So we, you know how it is, family. You hope for the best, but you plan for the worst. So in case, you know, the most high tarries, in case this thing kind of drags out, you know, through the rest of the through the rest of the year or through the uh or through the, through next year, we want to at least make sure we have things in place to make sure that our stay here in the daughter of Babylon is comfortable. And one of those things, family, is just making sure that you know these is making sure our rights are protected, and that's part of the uh goal behind the um the petition so anyway if you haven't gotten a chance to check out the petition or sign the petition the uh, petition please do family and then what we're going to do like i said we're going to take that we're going to submit that to the u to the u.s uh department of justice we have already um praise the most high work with the u.s department of justice before that's one of those things family we haven't really been saying a whole lot as far as you know the work that we've been doing you know i'm kind of uh torn as far as uh you know, foretelling what we're what we're working on, because what we've seen family, especially with the especially with these enemies of Israel family, what they do is family is that once they find out what we're working on, then they try to get in front of us and stop us. So that's why we don't I don't really telegraph, you know, what we're doing or what the plans are a, a whole lot. But in this case, you know, we've already worked with the D Department of Justice. Uh, one of our praise reports family is that we've uh, we've had two Israelite families uh, that we were able to get justice through the Department of Justice. And basically, I think um, both of them had to do with their their homeowners association and their, the homeowners association. They were, you know, the family was, was just trying to observe Shabbat. You know, they put a, a uh, some sort of Shabbat um, paraphernalia in their window, you know, trying to observe like a feast day or something like that. The the homeowners association didn't like it. So, of course, I think they fined them and told them to take it down. So. Uh, praise the most high. We was able to work with the Department of Justice and turn that situation around. So now that the home, home not only did the homeowners association allow them to uh, to, you know, observe Shabbat, have the stuff in their window. But get this family. The homeowners association was also required to take sensitivity tr training on Hebrew Israelites. Get that family. <laughs> and they had to pay a fee and they had to pay a fee to the family. Hallelujah. So we work in family. Praise the most high. We, we are working. And so that's what we're trying to do with the Department of Justice. And and just uh, and we are also uh, we have filed uh, freedom of information. So I don't know if you guys have heard like the Freedom of Information Act. So basically, family, you know, whenever, um, you know, we've heard like the things like the, the ADL has they go around and they teach law enforcement. I mean, they teach they teach both federal, state and local. Uh, and the, and the, the problem with us, family, we know that the African American African American community has had problems, systemic problems, with law enforcement. So we need to know what they're teaching law enforcement about us, family. So we have filed a Freedom of Information Act request to uh, for the information that is being taught to the FBI, to the uh, state uh, officials, as well as the local officials. So we are going through that process now. So again, like I get, you know, I didn't want to necessarily telegraph it, but since we've already submitted it, you know, now we can let you know what we're working on. So we are we are an advocate for Israel. We're working behind the scenes 
for Israel. Hallelujah. All right. So anyway, but that's that family. So just like I said, if you get a chance, sign the petition. Uh, that will be uh, just another um, effort that we're something that we're another uh, goal that we're trying to do. And then um, also save. You know, we'll put a calendar date out there, um, but we're also trying to plan something big as far as a conference or something like that later this year. But we'll get the specifics on that as well. And and also we will have a definitely have a fundraising fundraising uh, drive because there is some software that we need to get in order to in order to be able to track every single piece of legislature from the federal to the state to the local government. Uh, there's software that does that and allows that. So we want to purchase that and offer that through the website. Uh, so that you all can track track it and we will get notified of anything that's coming against us from the you know, you know from the legal system we want to know about it so we'll put that out there that information out there we'll do a fun fun uh razor drive for it and we'll go from there all right so i think that's all the administrative stuff family and so i am seeing a lot of uh eclipse totality alerts here so hey let's do this real quick family if there's anyone from texas anyone from texas on the live what i'll do and let me um see if i can find my my support on my screen where i can share let's see hide invite copy all right so i'm going to drop this in the chat so this is the stream yard link and i will let's see and this thing's scrolling today. Let's see. Show. All right. Uh, all right. I don't know if that's showing up on the uh, on YouTube. Let me let me jump over to YouTube right quick, family. But uh, let's see here. So let me try that again. Let's do Streamyard link. And like I said, family, if you are in, I mean, you know, you know what, family, I tell you what, we'll, we'll, we'll just open it up. We'll just open it up, family. So if you want to uh, feel free to hop on, family, and what we'll do, family, is, you know, we'll, we'll let you on, you know, give you five, you know, five, ten minutes, five minutes. I know we'll probably have a, a, a lot, may have a lot of people, depending on how many people we have, but five, ten minutes, just share your thoughts as far as what your expectations are for this you know now that the eclipse is being written across the daughter of babylon what are your expectations you know what are your expectations family so uh let's see here put user time out let's see i just want to there we go all right so that's stream stream yard link if you can get it i see uh sister carol and uh all right and bring sister carol on hang on one second Shalom, shalom. Sister Carol, how you doing? Hey, peace and blessing, my brother. How are you doing today? Ah, doing bless. Doing bless. Gre greetings from Houston, Texas. Oh, Home that's Houston. right. That's right. Greetings from uh, Mission Control here in Houston, NASA. Wow. Um, but we're cloudy and rainy, actually across Texas. The only city in the state of Texas who will see complete total eclipse is in Kerrville, Texas. They always see all the eclipses. In fact, they, they've had two eclipses within six months this year. So they, wow. are, they will be in complete darkness. Right now, they're in the process of the moon moving in their direction as we speak. It's already done. Mexico, but you got to be talking about it. But, but um, Houston, Dallas, we're probably going to see this partial because it's so cloudy outside. and It's been raining here off and on. And it's very heavy clouds. So we won't probably see anything. So I'm watching on my laptop. And they're showing it locally from NASA and he's from Mission Control um, on the local news. But um, but Kerrville, yeah. Texas, they see everything. Yep. I, to, no, no, just to, just to add to your point, Sister, Sister Carol, so I, I mm -hmm. pulled up uh, the NASA.gov, science.nasa.gov. Mm -hmm. And right. so they have like a, an animation that 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 shows the, the track of the eclipse as it's going across the U.S. So to your yes. point. Yeah, so they are the eclipse is it's in uh Mexico, and like yep. you said, it's he heading uh heading directly to towards Kerryview, uh, Kerrville. Texas, Kerrville, right. Texas, right? 
Exactly. So we'll just see. We, we won't see anything. It'll probably just get dark because it's already, like I said, it's cloudy outside. It's been raining off and on throughout the day. But um, here, Houston, as well as Dallas, we probably see just a glimpse. More different than the path of Kerrville going to Austin, because going up that pathway, um, they're probably going to see the most. But Kerrville will see everything. They will be complete darkness in Kerrville. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, Sister Carol, you have any expectations? I mean, so after the, the eclipse finishes going across the uh, the U.S.? I you... I expect what's going to happen. I don't know if it's going to start soon because it already is happening, but I think it's going to increase. I, I'm, I expect more judgments to come across this country. I see more plagues about to happen. It's like they had the last plague, which was the this virus that happened in 2020. Because the, remember the last eclipse, I was living in Atlanta when the last eclipse happened in 2017. So I saw it in Atlanta. And then two years after that, or three years after that, we were introduced to this plague situation. So I'm expecting something else drastic to happen in this country. Yes. In particular, this path, these paths where these, where these um, eclipses have happened and across the states where heavily um, we were enslaved I expect to see more and more um, tragic um, plagues that come across the land. Yep. That's yep. right. Hallelujah. I, I, I believe the same thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sister Carol. You can feel you can feel it. You can feel the, yep. the tension because all of this, this anti-Semitism thing, there's this little plague in us right now. I think they're in fear and knowing that something's coming. And I feel after this situation passes through. I think that's going to be a direct um, hit with the judgment. Yeah. And uh, Sister Lind uh, Lindell Williams said the bugs are coming out out of the ground shortly. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> yeah. Yep. 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 And that's another yep. thing. So we got the we, uh, the cicadas are supposed to be emerging. Yes, I, know, like, I saw that. Yep. Uh, some reports, you know, some reports kind of give an exact date where other reports kind of just give like a, a general time frame. But either mm -hmm. either way, family. To Sister uh, Lindell Williams' pr uh, point, the bugs are coming out, and it's supposed to be two broods at the same time, which it, which is supposed to mean that you know you're going to have uh, a swarm, mm -hmm. a swarm. Mm -hmm. And when I looked at the map of the swarm, I believe uh, a good part of that swarm was going to be near Little Egypt. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> Little Egypt. And just a, a, a another another lamb back on what you were talking about, Sister Carol. So th this is what I'm sharing on the screen is is uh this is from Forbes magazine. Oh yeah. And they were saying like they, they just just kind of given an, an itinerary of what was happening today. They was like, all right, so yeah. this is what's going to happen. And so if you scroll down, check this out. It says uh it says the event will be live streamed, you know, by NASA. We know that, and mm -hmm. it talks about the comet. So the, mm -hmm. of course the Devil's Comet. We've heard about that. Right. And, you know, comments aren't typically visible, uh, visible. They're talking about it. It should be it should be visible during the uh, time of totality. And then get this. This was another one, family. And I, I've seen the uh, Zycan Zycanium bring this out. Uh, the European Council for Nuclear Research, CERN, will fire up the Large Hadron Collider, the most powerful particle accelerator in the world on Monday and collide protons together to simulate the Big Bang. What in the world are they firing that thing up right now for? <laughs> Why in the world would they wait to the eclipse to fire up this experimental collider? And it is experimental, family, because it's, I don't know if you've noticed or not, but it's been offline. Like here, here's the CERN website. It's been offline for, uh, for a while, and they just recently brought it up online in March. And then in order for them to use it, they have to do this thing where, where they where they uh, create this, this thing called a stable beam. So they created the stable beam on Friday <laughs> in, <laughs> in, in preparation for today. So it's like, yeah, yeah I mean, but, but Sister Carol, what are they? Who are they trying to reach? They're with this thing? They're, they're, they're in fear of whatever they feel is coming at them and they're trying their best to stop it. That's what mm. everyone is doing. They're, they're in fear of whatever is coming in the atmosphere and they want to protect themselves from, com from, from it coming. You can't protect yourself from it. It's going to come. It's going to destroy whatever you're trying to do. 
right. it, it's going to just be torn down. And that's right. what's happening. They're, they're just running craze, creating yep. all types of situations. So I, um, I expect you're going to hear more and more of the type of situations go on of creation of, of trying to uh, eliminate, trying to um, foresee, trying to bring their own prophecy of some sort uh, to reality. And it's not going to happen. Yep. It's going to be destroyed. Yep. Well, I, like I said, I, I can see why they're afraid. Because mm -hmm. when you look at all the dirt that yes. they have done. Absolutely. To the children of Israel. Oh, yeah. Peeling off flesh and eating it and cutting up bodies and, <laughs> and all that stuff that was on Pastor Kelly's, um, you know, on some of his lives lately. I mean, that yes. thing just turns your stomach, family. I'm telling you. Yes. Yes. Uh, the most high. And, and they got to get double. <laughs> double. Double whammy. <laughs> I just don't see how. <laughs> double, <laughs> double whammy. It's, 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 uh, oh. that's, and that's what they're afraid of. Wow. They know, they know it. You can, you can feel it. You, we can, you can actually feel the hairs on your back tingling because you know something is coming. Yep. Yep. It's just, it's just that close we can touch it. it I mean, Sister Carol, every time they, they burn uh, an Israelite alive, double. Yes. Every, oh, every time double. they took, the, the 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 babies and fed them to alligators double double every time they cut off the, the fingers of, of israelites double i mean double <sighs> I, I, what what i learned uh fam I, i'm not sure if y'all used to get wh whoopings you know wh whoopings not spankings but whoopings back in the day but if you have siblings and your sibling yep. was getting getting a whooping you didn't want to get be anywhere near that belt when it was being swamped because you might get hit <laughs> exactly accidentally <laughs> Abs exactly absolutely yeah i was gonna tell everyone too if you want to download the app skyview which gives you you have to go in the dark a dark area in the house and you can see the alignment of the planets and you can see the eclipse happening in the app it's a satellite hmm. the feed that comes back from the satellite um in nasa which wow. gives it which is really cool to look at and you can see the stars and how the alignment of it is, which is which is very interesting. How hmm. this alignment of these planets and this solar and this uh, eclipse is happening with the stars, and it's, it's very important because one of the stars is showing you is a birthing. Mm. Yes, it's a birthing. Yes, and we all know what that birthing means. Yep. Yep. Well, well, hang on, Sister Carol. Like I said, okay. you feel free to hang out if you if you want uh, or or drop. I know it's the, the I'll middle. Drop. Of... I'll let someone else come on. I'm, I'll go back to okay. the chat. I just okay. To pop on there and let you know the yeah, Curville right, right now is Curville. Curville, Curville is completely dark right now. They're showing it on TV. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thank you, Sister Carol. You're welcome. God bless you. Talk to you later. All right. Shalom. <laughs>
but you know the the bible is true and the earth is groaning and the earth has been groaning for a while and so we see that and the bible talks about pestilence and things of that nature and so we just had an earthquake um down here in a in a dmv and it was just sprinkled out from new york and philly and you know i'm from philly so i have family back in philly and they they everybody felt it in jersey and so these things just tell us that the most high word is true right and so i feel like this is the beginning of the end and when i say the beginning of the end because the earth is grown and is the bible attributes the all of these times like the the time to know so there's a prohibition right now so we know that Noah was preaching for 120 years to tell people, hey, the rain is coming, the rain is coming. And so <laughs> now we're in that time. So we have a, a time where people have to get, you know, um, just close to the most high and get in the word and, you know, seek out the perfect example and our Messiah to, to see how we can be, you know, in his hand of protection so we don't get his wrath. Uh, when he comes for judgment. So that's what I think. I think we about to see all kinds of even more pestilence. Uh, we about to see, uh, just like Sister Kara said, they're going to try to do their thing on the evil side. Uh, you know, the things that's coming to earth. And so the Bible is true and we just need to buckle up because it gets real from here, especially the signs say I'm tired from that. So that's what I believe. Yep. Good point. Good point. <laughs> Excellent point. Yeah. And it's funny because, um, you know, if you, I guess if you, you think of, I, I was trying to think, think of it from their side. I mean, from the, from their perspective, like, you know, all this time they've been, they've been persecuting, you know, enslaving, persecuting the, the children of Israel. And then all of a sudden, you know, it seems like it's coming to the end and I can see why they would want to pull out all the stops to try to stop this thing from happening. You know what I mean? Like they would try to, um, you know, of, of, you know, of course, you know, you got, we got the food, you got the water, you know, mess, mess with the food and mess with the water uh, with the jabs and stuff like like that, you know, leading up to uh, up to today. But also. And I, I got this from uh, just kind of watching some of the, uh, the the lessons of the elders, you know, messing with the trying to mess with the spiritual realm, like trying to, you know, in, you know, invoke witchcraft and, and you know, demons and, and stuff like that, you know, to me, like. I can see why they would do it, but to your point, uh, sister, it's like I can. I mean, of course, we know this. It's not going to. It's not going to work. <laughs> At the end of the day, you know, the most the most high is going to get the victory. But, uh, Absolutely, that's the reason why the scriptures tell us that men's heart is going to sell them for what's coming to the earth because it's no joke. And unless you're spiritually sound and you're already set back, how 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 can anybody you know withstand and so we see that the the days have been shortened we you know you look at the sky and i i distinctly remember having a conversation with my mother and she was like is it just me or does the sky seem like it's very close and we literally just stood up there and said the same thing like why does it seem like the earth the sky is getting closer to the earth and it's, it's so many different things that's literally just preparing for this all of this like a whirlwind and so not only that we you see that birth and pain closer and closer now we used to have different things you know every year would be something now it's every month or every couple of weeks you got the bridge you got the earthquake you got the cliff it's just so many different things and it's just getting us prepared so i definitely believe the evil side is waiting like okay well just like they did uh with the jazz, so they not only make the problem, but then they give you a solution. So it's just the same thing. They create a problem, and then their solution is the only solution. And that's when we, of course, we get like the market stuff like that. So, like I said, to, to all the things, just buckle up. But we have to be the example to everybody else. But again, thank you for the opportunity. Hey, thanks for jumping, hopping on, and, and sharing and sharing your testimony and sharing your uh, your thoughts and perspective sister because um yeah i think we're all in the same all on the same page you know uh we have that that expectation you know um we know something's going to happen we just don't know like when you know when it's going to happen we know that the only way we're going to make it through it is believe in in the most high and uh but you know it's, it's kind of like i don't know about you sis it's like but it's like you know you got you have that excitement but then you, but then it's like that that the the unknown like that that 
you know, ha- trying to expect what the, what are trying to figure out like what's ahead. You know, that that's I think that's that's what some folks are uh, are wrestling with right now. Amen. It, it's definitely an unknown, but you gave um, you gave us just in that sentence. You gave us everything, so we know what's coming, but we still have the unknown. So that's why we have to cover for everything. So again, I uh, thank you for allowing us to jump on and, and have a say. Shalom. Shalom, shalom. All right. All right, Akoti. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, good. We have some uh, some more guests. All right. So uh, shalom, shalom, brother Chris Miles. How you doing? Hey, good brother. How you doing? Doing excellent. So, good, what, what good. Are your, so what are your thoughts on, thoughts on what's going on today? <laughs> Uh-oh. Brother, I've been <laughs> talking about this for so long, not just the eclipse. But uh, the things that are shaking up in the world, right? In Isaiah, in 24th, 24th chapter, it says the Lord is going to lay waste the earth and devastate it. He will ruin its face and scatter its inhabitants. Um, and we kind of see it happening. You know, recently we're hearing all these scientists talk about how the earth is drying up or is overheating. And that's what he tells us in Isaiah. The earth dries up and withers. The world languishes and withers. The exalted of the earth languish. The earth is defiled by its people. They have disobeyed the laws, violated the statutes, and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse consumes the earth. Its people must bear their guilt. Therefore, earth's inhabitants are burnt up and very few are left. And we kind of see that shaking and shape shaping up, you know, this this whole thing with Israel attacking uh, Syria. Uh, Iran and Syria, you know, has some deep implications here. You know, I mean, you see Russia and uh, I don't know if you remember this, but Russia, China and Iran have a mutual defense pact. Right, right. Yep. So. You know, now they're talking about uh, one of Russia's uh, nuclear submarines has disappeared, right? Um, we see China, you know, uh, rattling their sabers, right? North Korea rattling their sabers. Uh, it, it doesn't look good for this country. The hypocrisy, the stand by and watch apartheid and the support this genocide is just you know it just doesn't uh, you know have a good uh, look for this country so i uh, you know I, I think that we're gearing up for a major war and i think it's going to have you know it's going to happen soon that's my opinion yeah i i totally agree i totally agree and it just seems like it's it's so close to i mean to your point um cuz i you know, mainstream media doesn't seem to be to to be uh, tracking a lot of what's going on. Uh, it seems like so to me, it seems like if you're if you have like a uh, social media, like if you have Twitter or if you have TikTok or stuff like that, you know, those those um, you know platforms provide a little bit more information as far as like what's you know, what the current state of affairs like over in Israel. Like I usually hear about, you know, strikes and 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 bombings and stuff like that on social media first <laughs> before I hear, hear it on mainstream media. But said all said all that to say, well, say it again. It's very biased. Yes, it is. And it's just that to your point, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's going on over in Israel, a lot of posturing on both sides that's not being picked up by mainstream media that's low, that's lowering, you know, uh, you know, the the community at large to sleep, you know, they, they don't really see how close we are to, you know, you know, I don't want to use the word Armageddon, but we'll just say World War Three, you know, but, but we'll no, see. I, I completely agree with you. You know, it's, it's, you know, people outside the country can see it more than we can because the news we get is so filtered and uh, it's commercialized, right? And like I said, biased, but yeah, even this whole thing about this red heifer and how they're pushing back against Hebrews, right? I, you know, I've been watching some of the, the videos you put out, brother, and I've been like, wow, you know, I've been, 
you know, the stuff is, is so timely, you know, uh, you know, the his, historical, because they have no history right. beyond growing up in Germany and th around 300 AD, you know, we know that they were the Visigoths, right? That they eventually overruled, I mean, overran Rome and, and ruled Rome. We know mm -hmm. that the Visigoths were in France, they were in Spain, they were in Portugal, and then in Germany. So that's their history. That's their history. Yeah. But when you when you when you press them for well, where did you migrate from to Germany? Where was that migration? Where was the history of your enslavement? There's none of that. So I think all this is like smoke. You know that they're trying to continue this narrative, this false narrative, and this you know. But anyway, all this is leading up to this culmination where this big war is going to take place. Yes. And they're at the center of it. Yeah, no, I, I, was, but, agree, agree, I was just agreeing with you, uh, Brother Miles. I was like, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think you're right. Yeah, so. and, and well, brother, I, I appreciate the, you know, what you, you know, what you do, and I appreciate you opening the platform for me to give my little point of view and my little spiel. And <laughs> 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 well, thanks for thanks for hopping on. I really appreciate you. Yeah, brother. You know it's interesting because you know I've been on this since 1978. I just the Lord woke me up, and uh, and I, you know I was standing around like I was the only one at the time. I'm like, well, wait a minute, where's everybody at? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was wow. going to Christian. I was going to the church. I'm from originally from Philly, but I live in, in Texas now. But I remember wow. standing around looking and listening. And you know, being in a church, I'm like, well, there's a disconnect. I even went to the pastor and said, "Listen, something's missing." And he <laughs> said, "Well, there's nothing missing. There's nothing new under the sun." I said, "Well, may, that may be true, but you ain't hitting on it. You know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you're, you're not really, t you know, you're not speaking on what the Lord has shown me." So now that I'm hearing all you brothers talk about this. I'm like, wow. The Lord is really working in this, in this day and age. So keep up the good work, brother. I appreciate it. Hallelujah. Well, thank you. Thank you, brother. Oh. Thank you, good brother. Peace. Thank you. All right. Peace and blessings. Enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Hallelujah. All right. Let's see. Hang on a All second. Right. Can you hear me? Ibn, is yeah. my mic working? Yeah, we can. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay. I just want to make sure, you know, uh, <laughs> I just want to got, got my, my tinfoil hat on, right? You uh -oh. know. <laughs> but anyway, uh, I'm making it, you know, it's for humor purposes. But I did want to say this, though, family. I mean, even, you know, I, I was listening to what the brother just stated about uh, propaganda media. We have to um, make sure everyone understand uh, it's not just the United States that filters media with the news. All of them do it uh, from Russia to Britain to Israel right now, currently, uh, Af uh, many of the African countries, uh, China, uh, uh, Northern, North Korea, South Korea, they all filter their media to uh, push an agenda. You know, and, and again, for those that are watching, I just had this hat on for a little, little humor. Uh, what's that movie with uh, Mel Gibson? <laughs> when they all had on that aluminum foil hat saying that it was going to protect their minds from being hacked by the aliens. But anyway, uh, going back to my point, I just want to just reiterate that point that when we start dealing with uh, media and we start dealing with information, I think that uh, we have to make sure that when I say we, those that are interpreting the signs, uh, don't just be, you know, don't limit it to just the United States. It's for every country every nation that have enslaved our people. You know, I was just going back over uh, Gog and Magog, uh, Ezekiel chapter 38, right? And it talks about um, Gog and Magog. But if you go a little further down, you'll see Gomer, right? Uh, descendants of Gomer supporting uh, Gog and Magog. Then if you go down a, a few uh, verses below that, you'll see Ethiopia, you'll see um, Libya, you'll see African countries 
mentioned there. So we want to make sure that we put things in its proper perspective because uh, it tells us that uh, pretty much in a nutshell, if we want to be real about it, all nations conspired against us. So uh, with this uh, this eclipse, you know, family, just take it as a sign, proof, evidence that uh, something is shifting. You know, something is shifting. Uh, and, you know, whatever that thing is going to happen, uh, we know that the scriptures lay out a, a, a format from Christ's own words, what was going to follow after uh, the this sign that we see today, you know, and how it's going to have an effect. So I just thought I'd uh, put that out there because I heard the brother mentioning about the media in the United States. And I want to make it clear, it's not just the United States that are uh, uh, have that playbook of showing the people exactly or being selective with what they present to the people. Uh, all the nations are doing that right now. Russia, again, uh, uh, UK, China, all the countries are doing that. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So good. Yeah. Good point, uh, Pastor Kelly. But man, yeah, I'm actually uh, looking out my window right now and it's, uh, I, I don't know where, how it, the weather looks or what outside looks like at uh, your neck of the woods, uh, Pastor Kelly, but it's actually starting to get dark over here. And I'm, I'm over in Atlanta. <laughs> so, you know, we are way outside of that path, but we are still, you know, it's still getting dark over here. Well, they, they project um, the projections are between here between 230 and 330. So I'm looking out my window to my, my right here and it looks looks the same to me. Yeah. Uh, but but for me, it's just, you know, just like what, what you and I talked about is just what is going to be the signs that's going to come uh, that's going to follow, you know, and I'm not looking at it from a perspective of what happened in uh, Exodus, but just even with Christ's own words. He, he literally said immediately after the great tribulation, he talks about this sign that we see here, but then he goes on even further and say that, and then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn mm. and they shall see the son of man coming in the clouds of heaven with great power and great glory. So we uh, see yeah. that there's a process there. So right now this is setting us up for some additional signs that we are going to see that when it says the son of man, in other words, the signs of the Messiah, whatever those signs are going to be, whether it's through plagues, uh, which we do know that uh, whenever Israel was in the captivity, you do see certain things that, that takes place, whether it's with the plagues from agriculture and things along that line, whether, or we may even see how the most high will stir up deliverers from within the community to start stirring the people up, you know, similar to what he's doing right now with our people becoming more and more uh, awakened to the truth. Hallelujah. All right. Well, hey, uh, cause let me uh, bring in our next guest. Hey, peace and blessings, my brother. You doing okay? Hey. Thanks for covering this. Uh, I'm in Forest City, Arkansas. Thanks for having me on. It's actually dark here now. I didn't think I would see this, but wow. you know, I thought I was one county over, but now I still see it. It's pretty pretty <laughs> uh, gloomy looking. Uh, I wanted to bring up that movie, Howard the Duck. I seen it when I was a child and didn't think nothing about it. And you know how they say, they, they tell you in these movies what they intend to do. But if you notice toward the end of the movie, a lot of people was being demon possessed and all that. And they was trying to open a portal and them demons was trying to come through. I think that's what the uh, project CERN project was all about. Mm. Yeah. And I'm amazed that I'm that far out of the uh, projected uh, line of travel for the eclipse. And it's actually, it's, it's a strange gloomy look here. Yeah, it is. <laughs> It is. It's, it's not like it's, it's it's a cloudy dark, you know, like sometimes you got the, the clouds come across the sun. Um, right. It's, it's not that shade. It's, it's like a totally different shade. Um, right. But yeah, but, but back to what you were saying about CERN. So like it's interesting because, you know, like I said, I just have questions like, you know, why in the world would CERN, you know, run these tests during the eclipse? I mean, because literally family, they are running something br uh, brand new because uh what they, you know, CERN has been, it's been offline for a while. And the reason why it was offline was because they were retrofitting it to make it more powerful. 
Right. And then and then they just started turning it back on. And that, uh, and like I said, that, that they call it like a, a stable beam. Uh, it's, it's like the part, the point where they want to, to get CERN to where they can start uh, collecting data. So they um, reached stable beam status on Friday. I think Friday is the fifth, right? If I'm looking at my calendar. Right. But, that's right. Yeah. And then in addition to that, they're going to run additional tests today. <laughs> so. Hmm. So it, like it's like I said to me it, it it makes no sense unless you have some alternative motives you know for uh, like to your point like opening portals and stuff like that the, now the, right. now the news will tell you that they'll, they'll tell you in a minute like oh no that's you know that's conspiracy theory and all this other stuff but everything they're doing right now is experimental like there's no playbook for what they're doing with the with the settings that they have it on today and so they say. And just a, just one last uh, comment on CERN. If you guys don't know, so CERN is located in Switzerland, like a uh, hundred feet. It's either a hundred feet or meters below ground. Below ground. Again, why are they all heard, the way down there? <laughs> I heard three hundred feet down. Oh, you know what I wish? Down. I wish I wish it was just flood. I wish something would happen. Right. Just flood out. <laughs> right. Um, what they're trying to do, I've heard this, and it makes sense uh, that they're trying to crack the firmament, mm. which is the barrier between the spiritual realm and the physical, from what I understand, right? Wow. And uh, it's just, um, oh, and they was talking about global warming. That's a hoax. They're using that to, you know, I drive trucks, and you have to use this blue solution called DEF, uh, diesel exhaust fluid. Mm -hmm. on this stuff on these trucks and it's just uh another racket to make money and all our tax dollars is going into this stuff and these wars and stuff and and they, they manipulate the market on purpose to to cause this inflation they're doing this stuff on purpose yep the ones who created the money system is doing it on purpose it's it's not our race is doing it it's the it's the you know the the ones that call themselves you know what and uh you know i drive trucks right now i'm fixing them land the plane and say this they know who we are and i prove it by saying this us truckers have cb radios right now i hear a whole lot of racial slurs and when i do i tell them who i am in the bible and who they are and they they get quiet real quick <laughs> wow they, they, they probably don't didn't expect you to go there <laughs> <laughs> now that i know it is this you know it <laughs> they're scared yeah put it like it scares yeah. the crap out of them. I feel empowered anytime uh, I can do that. And I know the Lord has woke me up and thank God I'm seeing other people waking up. Uh, I've, I've met people at a hospital who just had a conversation about who we are as a people. We were all the same people, you know, our race. And uh, I brought out some things. Me and my dad was there on one of his doctor's appointments. We was in the lunchroom. And uh, I just felt the amazing camaraderie with that. And it's inspirational and brings a lot of hope. Yeah. Well, I I, I know how you felt because I remember when you, you first got on and you were saying that like when you 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 know you became aware you know or awake uh, a long time ago, and mm -hmm. uh, and I, I can imagine that that was lonely <laughs> because not a lot of people was awake back then, at least as far as I know, not compared to now. Like you know now you, you have a lot more people that that's uh, you know, aware of being being Israel and. Uh, getting plugged into their history and stuff like that, but yeah, definitely like in the seventies and eighties. Wow, mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you were a, a, a rare breed for sure. Wow, uh, I was about in my late teens when I started reading and, and getting things in the Bible on my own. I quit going to church because they didn't tell me the truth about these holidays and stuff. Then mm -hmm. I started reading the Bible, and I've had business reading the Bible and stuff. I just I don't know what to say, but wow. Hmm. On that, I mean, <laughs> hallelujah. Well, hey, thank you, my brother, for, for calling in. I mean, it just goes to show, I, I think, that we're all on the same wavelength. I mean, we're all, we're all on the same page as far as, you know, what's happening, you know, what to expect. You know, the expectations are out there. Like Pastor Kelly said earlier, I think we can all feel that shift. It's like a shift is coming. And I guess that's why I'm so excited, because, you know, we see the shift and they see the shift. <laughs> so. Right. 
Thanks for having me. I'm gonna jump back down in the chat and uh, you have a good one. I'll uh, be listening and watching in the comments. Oh, okay, sure. okay. Well, have a good one. Uh, most I bless you. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. All right, family. Hey, uh, Pastor Kelly, are you out there? Let's see. All right. Bear with me, family. And I think that is it as far as the guest. Guess, let, all right, let me play this for you, family, because like, like we said, there's, you know, not only can we feel the shift in Israel. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I saw uh, <laughs> hot sauce out there. Hey, peace and blessings. Uh, thanks for hanging in there. No, yeah, no, no problem. Shalom. Something happened with my computer as well. So uh, uh, first I want to say uh, shalom and happy Hebrew New Year to the folks. And uh, it's an exciting time to be alive. Yes. You know, it's very exciting. I, I mean, I wish I could be in the States to see it with you guys, but unfortunately I'm, I'm abroad. So, oh, but uh, thank you for uh, having me on. And I just want to make uh, just a few couple points. Mm -hmm. um, number one, I guess, is uh, well, I want to make a point and ask a question. If you could do a part three to, you know, where is Israel? Because, you know, as you said in your other posts, this is the sign of the captives to be free. Right. So this is why this is an exciting time, because, you know, individually, you know, maybe the curses have led up on us. But as a as a nation, as a group, we're done. Like when this it when this uh this uh, eclipse finishes pathway, we're done. You know, Jacob's trouble. We're it's 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 over, right? And that's a lot to celebrate, and that's and, you know an exciting time to come back into the covenant, and it's also exciting time to see you know the wilderness. Right, because and correct me if I'm wrong. Right, before World War Three, we go back into the wilderness. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know there's different takes on it, but that's the yeah. that's I know it's one of the understandings. Okay, so I ain't fin I ain't finna worry about Iraq. I ran nothing like that because as long as we on it's still in America for the most part, not really going to happen. Because one thing I noticed, because I've been I've gotten into the truth about 2013, is that we're the barometer. Right. So when something happens to us, then something happens on the earth. Something else happens to us, then something else happens on the earth. And I believe that the um what was it like the Revelation 12 sign happened? Then more and more people out of nowhere started to come more into the truth. Then mm -hmm. in 2017, the eclipse happened, the first part. Then we were getting the warnings, right? Like the pandemic and all these other things. And I believe that uh between 27 from between 17 and today 20 uh 2024, that was their grace period to repent. And they did it. Oh, just just to interject just for a quick second. Uh yeah. so to your point, there's the the eclipse is is over Carbondale, Illinois right now. So you brought up the, the point of the previous, you know, the previous eclipse and the yeah. or the previous uh you know um warning mm -hmm. so right now it is over carbondale and that's where that x marks the spot which is little egypt so again this, this is again family like this is one of those this is it family <laughs> yeah, well it. i mean so the yeah. gentiles got what like five more minutes right right, right. <laughs> so yep. enjoy it enjoy it guys y'all got like five more minutes of, of your rulership because the time of the gentile has finally come to an end wow hallelujah for that hallelujah you know, all praises for that. <clears throat> and so, and then as, as far as CERN, I mean, I'm pretty sure this eclipse uh, between different dimensions, you know, I'm pretty sure the veil is weak or whatever. This is the opportune time. And I'm pretty sure they're going to be successful, right? Because uh, in Revelation, it talks about Apollyon coming from the deep, right? Mm. So 100 meters down, which is about 300 feet. Right, in Switzerland, the Caucasus Mountains area, right? Right. We don't know where the where the Horites come from, you know. So it's right place, right location, right time. I'm pretty sure hmm. they're gonna, you know what I mean? Because it's already been prophesied. But again, we're there's going to be a hedge around us in the wilderness. So again, I think that 
whatever's going to happen that's going to be negatively impacted, this is for the Gentiles, like the other caller said, right? And they're going to get double, right? Yes. So, yep. Yeah. So, so that's 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 where I'm coming from with it. I'm yep. pretty sure. I mean, Gentiles going to do Gentile things, right? <laughs> right. Facts. And so, so right. you know what I mean. So let them be them, and let us be us, and let's 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 do it right this time around. So. I mean that's pretty much all I have. And my my one favor is if you could do like a part three about the Exodus because mm. I think that would be very important because you know we're it's kind of at the door in my opinion. I don't know what is your opinion about that the second Exodus. No, like I said, I, my expectation is I don't think, and like I said, I, I could be totally wrong. You know, as far as as far as you know, um, what I you know what happens next. But my expectations is is that. You know, America will be will eventually get judged. I feel as mm -hmm. though it's going to happen sooner rather than later. And I think mm -hmm. I believe that when it happens, we're going to be out of here like that's But that's just me guess, guessing. Right. But right. Um, but yeah. And I and where we go from here, I don't know. <laughs> Who yeah. knows? Because, I mean, I, I believe, you know, that seven year period between 2017 and 2024. I really I really personally my personal interpretation just right. my, you know, my personal interpretation, I really felt that that was their time to repent, right? The pandemic was giving them a little nudge, like, hey, something's coming. The 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 egg thing, right? Where it wasn't enough food and eggs, right? That's mm -hmm. another nudge. And, you know, all the, and then us waking up and saying, hey, we're the people. And then now they're saying, well, the color of Christ doesn't matter, Right. <laughs> then Putin open up the thing and say, hey, well, we have historical evidence. Well, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? They had all the time to say, okay, we acknowledge who you are. We repent for what we've we done to you guys. None of it happened. Mm, right. Right. They had their chance. Yeah, okay. so well, uh, well, I ran about to give them the act right, tell you that much. <laughs> about to give them the act right. So that yeah, that's all I have. So, I'm sorry. And uh, just even even just to, to add to your point, if if you don't mind me to um, interject in Benea, a um, couple of things I just want to point out, and I just think that'll be helpful, is when we look at the prophecies, uh, let's make sure that we include our history within it, because when we look at the world wars, you know, when I, when we start classifying the world wars, uh, that's tying into the manipulation of the other nations, as you mentioned, Gentiles simply means other nations. And when mm -hmm. we look at the scriptures, when we look at the great tribulation, even when we look at the time of sorrow, which occurred during uh, the disciples time, they, mm -hmm. each one of those uh, was centered around Israel, not around the other nations. So when right. we start looking at the world wars, uh, actually the transatlantic slave trade was a world war. You know, right. that's actually when you look at the very definition of what a world war is, is when groups of countries come together, nations come together, whether it's uh, on a common cause of, uh, you know, being allies or being enemies or whatever, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, the very definition, the transatlantic slave trade or world war actually falls right in alignment with it. So technically, if we want to go in technical terms. Uh, we can say that we're beyond World War Three. We can be gearing up for World War Four or World War Five based upon the history of our people. You know, so I just wanted to give a, a, a little nugget there that uh, the transatlantic world war, when we start listening to what and looking at what Christ said, he said it was going to be what uh, nothing uh, it's go, it's, it's going to be like uh, the actions and the things that we're going to see is going to be. Uh, like no other time since the time of Noah. And when right. we look at what happened and what occurred at the transatlantic world war, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's documented by historians saying that uh, no other people, no other group, there was no other time that was more wicked than that entire process, which we're still uh, dealing with the, 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 uh, the, the after uh, effects, the after effects of that. Yes. And so, and when we deal with the 400 years, Right. When we deal with here in the United States. Right. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother understanding of 
going into the prophecies when we start dealing with those different beasts. So I just thought I'd just mention that, just throw a little, uh, put a few nuggets there. And then just so that way, when we look at the prophecy, uh, let's make sure we include uh, our what happened to our community as a whole around the world uh, and look at transatlantic slave trade as actually what it is, a world war. So that gives us a, a better understanding of how to put the 400 years in its proper perspective, that it's not going to be a duplicate of what we see in uh, Israel coming out of Egypt, you know, and many people were looking for that to take place for the, the, the oceans to open up. And then we start marking, marching back to uh, Israel. But that's, you know, I think if we just let Christ's words help be lay things out, because so far everything he said is happening in that sequence. But I just thought I uh, just kind of uh, add a few additional uh, points to what you pointed out, my brother. Yeah, no, and, and I told I totally agree with you, and and I agree that Jacob Trumbull has already happened. You know, um, we have this kind of uh, bad habit, if you will, to look at what they're doing, and it kind of stu- even even after we're waking, a lot of us still interpret it the Bible according to their conditions. But you're right; it's it's our condition. And then it lets us know where we're at, right, as far as prophecy. And I think you're absolutely right about that when we talk about the uh, transatlantic war and the things that happen, both the transatlantic and the Arabic war, right? Because absolutely East, on the Easter side as well, right? So, and, and there's, I'm sorry, but there's nothing you can tell me that is going to come up that was worse than that, come right? On, yeah. you, you can't convince me that something worse than what happened back then. Is going to happen in the next whatever. Hallelujah, yeah. and that that's the point that uh, me and me and Benaya we we talk about it, and that's the point that we want to make sure that we don't allow them to have us erase the right. atrocities that was committed to us, because when we do that, then it's easy for them to put themselves on the same side of the Jordan as us, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know. So uh, as yes. as you pointed out, that there's a judgment. That's going to come to all nations. The scriptures makes it clear. Every single mm-hmm. nation, not just the United States, Russia going to have a price to pay. Great Britain, mm-hmm. UK, China, all of them going to have mm-hmm. a price to pay for what has become of our people. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm in China now. And ever since 20 for us, it was ever since 2019, the economy has never been the same here. Right. And but like every every everybody's going to get their judgment because uh, Southern China has has slaves from Eastern yeah, Eastern Africa, right? Because oh, they, they brought slaves from the uh, Arabic slave trade. Southern China. And that's a great point, and that's the point that many don't understand when it comes to just how other nations had their hands on it. You know, China, Japan, as you pointed out, man. Mm-hmm. As far as the Philippines. You know that which, um, from a military perspective, they call it the PACAF region. You know, mm-hmm. so it, it it you know that's the area that we cannot allow uh, the Europeans or the colonizers or the name stealers to have us interpret scripture from their lens, because then they're going to put themselves at the forefront as being the chosen people, and they're mm-hmm. going to use their fights against one another, each themselves among, you know, infighting to basically have us start locking the scriptures into their infighting according to their right, interpretations. Right. That's good, so, I, mean, I think, and that's where I think CERN is probably all about. They're going to pull something out of there and they're going to be like, okay, this is the Messiah and okay, somebody else is the people. They're going to be infighting and then we get involved and then we're missing what we're supposed to be doing, Right. And yeah. last point with discern, right? Uh, the uh, the word Babylon, Babel, right? Mm-hmm. It means gateway, but the mm-hmm. key is it means confusion by mixing. I'll say that again: confusion by what mixing. mixing. So when we start looking at even discern, what is the intentions of? I think Benea, you mentioned it earlier with you and Sister Carol about them firing something up into you know the particles trying to. Uh, create the big bang, so to speak. Of, that's still what mixing, right? You know, they're yep. trying to stir up confusion with the particles to cause a bang. You know what I mean? To, that mm-hmm. that 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 
uh, that central point of creation. So when we look at that from that perspective, when we start dealing with the CERN, we can actually see the influence of the CERN in religion. <laughs> you know what I mean? How we do, you know, because that's that Babylonian spirit to make us what mix, but the confusion that comes by it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there, there's definitely going to be confusion coming forth. And I just think for us, we just need to, you know, stay fast, stay prayed, uh, you know, repent and study the word to show yourself approved so that we don't get caught in the in the delusion right because it says like delusion will be so great that even the other saints could be confused I, I messed that up but if it you know even the saints could uh be be confused by it so yeah i mean i don't want to hold it up it's 3 a.m where i'm at but uh i really appreciate your time great conversation guys and uh and uh Ben Yah Israel, if you could please definitely do a part three towards Israel. I'll be looking forward to it. Thank you guys for your time. Hey, thanks for dialing in, my brother. Appreciate because it. Because I'm a I'm going in and out because I'm taking pictures of it and I'm sending it over to you. Check your phone, but I'm sending some pictures from where we are. Okay. I think it's just going through right now. Okay, okay. Right. Uh, shalom, everyone. Right. Right, shalom, my brother. All right, peace and blessings. All right, all right. All right. So actually, uh, that was a good segue because uh, we talked a little bit about, you know, what the what these the Gentiles are doing. Right. What these nations are doing to try to to, to switch the narrative. Right. They try to, um, you know, take what's what's for Israel and make it for them. <laughs> and just to give you an example of that, let me share this with you, family. Check this out. Let's see. Let me, uh... This coming solar eclipse is visible proof that God Almighty created heaven and earth and is in total control of what's happening in the planet and on, and on planet earth. The Bible says that God calls the stars by name, that he holds the seven seas in the palms of his hand, and he's sending this solar eclipse on April 8th tomorrow to warn the body of Christ to prepare for the rapture of the church. The rapture again? Are we still talking about that? <laughs> oh, are we still talking about that family? <laughs> yeah, it was funny because uh yeah, he, he's uh he, he's a special one family. He, he's a special one. I wouldn't tell you something that uh, bold if I didn't have a strong Bible foundation for it. And here it is, Luke 21, 25. The Bible says, and there shall be signs in the sun. That's going to be tomorrow. And then there will be signs in the moon. That's the four blood moons that have already happened about which I wrote this book that sold over a million copies in a very short period of time. All right, Israel. Hopefully, you don't have that book. <laughs> Just letting you know. But uh, but also, this is this is kind of like that the thing, family, where you know we notice that these these uh, these Christian apologists, right? These um, uh, Christian apologists, preachers, family, they will they will do the scripture two step. And what I mean by that is that they will skip over certain scriptures to to hold on to their doctrine. Like they'll read this part about, you know, the sun and the moon and all this other stuff, but he'll skip over the verses that talk about the people being scattered to all the nations of all the nations of the earth. Like the true Israelites will go into captivity into all the nations because the moment, like I said it before, family, the moment you say that there's only one one people that meets that criteria. <laughs> right. So this is like I said, this is just the. Some of the things that the uh, that the apologists do, family, another uh, some more scriptures that they avoid is they will avoid the book of Obadiah like the plague. Like they will not read the book of Obadiah. I can't tell you how, how long I had been in a Christian church and didn't even know that Obadiah was in my Bible because we would read Luke all day. We would read Matthew all day. We would dip and dabble in the Old Testament, what, we, what they call the Old Testament. But we would skip over Obadiah and then. Uh, in addition to Obadiah, in addition to Obadiah, whenever they would, you know, go to Ezekiel to pull out some prophecies, they would not read the verses in Ezekiel that talks about the land of Israel being appointed 
into Esau's possession. Like Esau's descendants would literally take the land of Israel. And that's the part that, you know, all the, the Sunday, Sunday morning um, Christian apologists for the most part, I'll just say for the most part, I won't say every single one of them, but for the most part, they will ignore those scriptures. They will ignore those scriptures. But let me just play a little bit more of this family. I know you're, it's kind of might be turning your stomach a little bit, but just hang, hang in there with me, family. Just trying to get to a point. The four blood moons and the stars. So the sun, the moon, and the stars are in fact celestial evangelists who are trying to communicate to people who read the Bible. The Bible says then they- You, you, got, you got your uh, pen and pencil, uh, Pastor Kelly? Because you, you take, you take yeah, notes. Yeah, yeah. I got my Magneto um, crown on too. So I'm making sure my <laughs> Magneto crown is, is in place. <laughs> They shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. These, now the Bible says, and these things begin to happen. Look up and lift your heads because your redemption draweth nigh. That's what God is saying. Do you have scripture that the heavens are God's billboard? Absolutely. Joel chapter two, verses 30 and 31 says. So again, this is that, 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 uh, that scripture two step, you know, he'll, he'll dibble, dibble and dabble a little bit in Joel, but like, I think somebody dropped uh, Joel three in the chat. Like there's certain, even certain places in Joel, he won't go, they won't go to family, you know? So that's why if you read the whole Bible family, you know, you'll, you'll, uh, you know, you'll, that's how a lot of folks wake up. They start reading the whole Bible and they start coming across verses that is not brought up on Sunday morning, you know. Um, but what what do you think of think of that one so far, Pastor Kelly? Well, you know, the 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 you know how they select, like you just pointed out, selective prof prophecy. Because when you touch on the book of Joel and he talks about pouring out his spirit, right? That's all dealing with what? The feast of weeks. You know what I mean? Right. But they'll take it <laughs> and make it as if it's, you know, put a whole spin to it, call it Pentecost Sunday and tie it into their interpretations of the prophecies. But to make it more specific is when we go to your point to Joel chapter three and it starts off with Israel being sold into slavery. You know what I mean? It, it, it yep. deals with that. And then it closes out with him cleansing, doing a blood transfusion of uh, his people because of the the uh, the effects of being enslaved, like the slavery that we had to deal with as a people. So I was about to take my Magneto hat off until you start <laughs> playing J um, uh, uh, John Hagee. So I decided uh, to put my Magneto hat back on. You know, <laughs> this thing is kind of hot too. But as soon as you put them on, I was like, oh, let me keep my Magneto hat. Right, on. right, right. <laughs> Trying to put, to put those mind games on you. Uh, it's, it's interesting, uh, Pastor Kelly, because you know. You know, we talked about like all the stuff that they've done to Israel, that they've done to Israel, like uh, and it's 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 a um, what I would call a contiguous persecution of Israel. And what I mean by that family is like when you talk about like after 70 A.D., it was nonstop persecution of our of our forefathers family. I'm telling you, it's like in some of these books like Hannah Adams, you know, where they they literally go through the history of Israel. Like it's just one persecution after the other, you know, it's like there was no rest, no rest for our people. And, you know, until it's like around 711 AD, you know, when the Moors and the Israelites conquered, you know, Spain and Portugal, there was a brief respite, a, a brief, you know, a point in time, period in time where whew, it looks like it looked as though our, our forefathers finally got from up underneath, the, you know, the most high's belt. We find that 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 small green patch of grass in the desert, <laughs> right? Thought everything was good, and then all of a sudden, the, the wheels on the bus came out, came off again. Somebody brought the Talmud into that into um, into that uh, that area, started teaching it, started preaching that that wicked doctrine, got Israel back away from the Most High, and then all of that stuff uh, started off again. And family, I'm telling you, it's like the the Christian Church. They laid waste to Israel, like even before the transatlantic slave trade, they laid waste to Israel. And also, when you talk about the uh, the Inquisition, and it's in the, the thing that that I, I don't think people realize, family, is like the 
the Roman Christian church knew exactly who they were persecuting. It wasn't like it was a mistake. Like they were just, oh, we were just persecuting, you know, dark skinned, melanated people. And oh, well, we, well, we didn't know you were Israel. It's like, no, they knew that we were Israel. They knew who they were persecuting. They literally had it in their in their book. They, they call it like the, the black book, which is the the, uh, the another name for the Inquisition book of laws and punishments. And so we were called out by name in the black book by the Christian church. And in the black book, there were uh, punishments of death. Right. For observing the laws, statutes and commandments, because that's another thing, uh, family, that folks will say, like, man, why are we so, uh, you know, so lost as a people? Why do we believe certain things? And it's because, family, that that was was beaten out of us, like that was persecuted out of us, like observing the law, statutes and commandments. We couldn't do that. <laughs> you know, what does do- your point that mm-hmm. ties into the 83rd book of Psalms, you know, because that crafty council. Uh, that that the cry in that passage it says that they made it clear they made it they entered into agreement among themselves to make sure the name of Israel is no longer in remembrance, right? And so when you look at that word name from a Hebrew uh, school of thought, uh, in the Israeli pronunciation is, is Shem, in the ancient is Sham, but it means reputation. It's a literal name, but also the reputation of the bearer of the name, the characteristics, mm. right? Because now when you see that word like, like is, uh, it simply means having certain characteristics, right? So they made it uh, an assertive effort to your point to erase, right? Uh, try to uh, completely take away the hidden ones that 83rd Book of Psalms deal with, but erase our memories, the reputation, everything that was associated with us, and as you see, they re, they re, uh, you know, appropriated it, you know, to other groups. You know, they appropriated our heritage to themselves. So now, when we go to interpret scripture, and all of us been under that Christian uh, delusion, is when you read in Revelation, when you're reading the seven churches, right? They'll teach that it's the seven churches ultimately being persecuted by the Israelites. Right. Yeah. But anyway, I yield. No, you're yeah. yeah. Totally agree, uh, Pastor Kelly. And um in some of the I remember reading like in some of the references that I, I would take a look at it, uh that, that I was reading, you know, it said like at the time the churches were were afraid of what I would call what of what they call and I would you know quote the rage of Judah the rage of Judah. And they were afraid of that. Like when they were persecuting, they were like, man, one of these days, Judah's going to raise up and get us back. But that day is not today. <laughs> you know, as far as, you know, uh, being back then. And they would taunt our people, you know, whenever they would have them in, you know, in derision, whenever they would have them uh, in these uh, torture chambers up underneath the church, part of the Inquisition, um, you know, some of the, the, the taunts that they would say is like, you know, your your most high Terry's, you know, basically your your most not your most high is not here. You know, we doing all this stuff to you. Where's your most high? You know, and basically it's like I said, it's, it's like it's almost like when you when you read that family, you got the feeling like they've thought and felt like this day would never come. Like, I know the most high is not, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, um, you know, the, the, the Hamashiach, the Messiah is not not here yet. You know, he hadn't returned yet, but I'm just saying that we are so it feels like that we are so close, especially with this this sign of the Aleph and the Tav being written over, you know, over this this country. But uh, I think that's like I said, I think that's why, you know, especially uh, folks here in the in the U.S., they are so afraid. Family. I'm telling you, they are so afraid because it seems like we are, you know, we are getting close to the end of the book. And, you know, Pastor Kelly, like they it's funny because. uh all the folks that did all that 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 dirty wickedness, they think they're getting off because they think they're gonna hop on a spaceship and fly away while the, the whooping for doing all that dirty that dirty stuff comes, you know, comes on the on the earth while they just chilling somewhere in, in heaven. You know. And then I and I guess they, you know, they think that we're gonna be waiting on waiting on on them in heaven as well. You know, that's that's what they told the slaves. <laughs> so anyway. But yep, yep. So, hey, Pastor Kelly, is it dark where you're at? You're at because it looks like uh, the the eclipse is uh, well, it might be pa- passing your area. 
Well, for my area, it's it did get completely dark because here it's like only 70 percent. OK, uh, OK. Eclipse. So what I sent yeah. to you, you know, I sent you some of the photos, but I also sent you sent you um, photos of my daughter, mm-hmm. a photo that my daughter sent me from because she's down in Houston for school. So she sent a photo and it was pitch black out there. Wow. Wow. You know, so uh, right. but yeah. Yeah. So as to, to your point, though, um, um, Benaya, is we are in a time like never before. And when we deal with um, d- d- the fulfillment of the prop, um, the prophecies, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, think about how, you know, when you start researching other awakenings, you know, there were. And, and, f- and for those that are watching for the first time, there was other awakenings. Right. But this awakening is like no other awakening. I mean, just to see how uh, people are just waking up to this truth. I mean, the social media has made the world uh, much smaller than, you know, uh, so information that was not available to our ancestors, we are privy to that information. So we are really seeing uh, some, some incredible signs. Uh, Like even with, to your point, remember, we, I'm not going to mention the name because I don't want to want them to ref. I mean, to flag your channel. But remember, <laughs> during the pan, the pandemic, right? Remember, the Roman Catholic Church start repenting. Mm. Uh, many rabbis oh, yeah. began to repent. Yep. You know, different communities that have done stuff to our community began to repent. And if if you start looking at around the time that time is when they start even talking of discussing reparations. I want to say the the uh, pandemic uh, hit them really hard. Yeah, it I, hit them really hard. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I remember there being like a stream of reports of you know all these bishops, um, you know, uh, going to sleep. Yeah, I mean, even Pope, mm-hmm. um, the current Pope was. I mean, he literally repented for the Catholic Church. Hmm. And remember, he gave reparations from the Catholic Church. It was something like, um, if I remember correctly, it was probably like ten to twenty million dollars. You know what I mean? But mm, wow. you know where, you know, but you know, that's that that is more, you know what I mean? But, yes, yes. But yeah. yeah, but if you go back and you study around that time, many of these uh, uh, places, people in these high places began to repent. You know, we saw stuff that we never thought we would see. We literally saw uh, that all three so-called Abrahamic religions shut down. They, they, they stopped what? They closed their doors? You know what I mean? People wasn't able to go there to worship, you know, and we had uh, such an overflow because of that, because people knew that our ministry was going to stay open no matter what. And we had some people coming from those other churches or well, coming from church, because I don't even like to call our ministry a, a church, but um, I, I like to refer to it a temple or assembly. But many of them start coming over to our assembly because of not having a place to worship. Right. Hmm. So think about what's coming. You know, we definitely know that there is something, uh, another set of um, signs that's going to be associated with what we see today, because Christ even made it clear that there is going to be a cry. You know what I mean? Whether it's a cry of all the nations or the cry of his people, the nation of Israel. Yeah, it's it's funny because uh that the um that part of the, the, the scriptures that talk about, you know, it said it says, and then they will see him coming, you know, the son of man coming with power and great and great glory. <laughs> and, and think uh, about that power. <laughs> man, man. And I'm like, man, so and I'm I'm kind of thinking in my mind, like, like, how's that gonna look? Like are, are you know, are they gonna be looking through a telescope and see something like far off in the distance that's just tearing up planets as it's coming this way? You know what I mean? Like and all they and they and they gonna see uh uh you know afros and <laughs> you know yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and, and just be freaking out it's like oh man this UFO he's coming and and, and he's he's black <laughs> well so. you know even just at the like a, like we talked about what occurred during the pandemic and I like I said I'm not I'm making sure that I don't use certain words but even when I actually looked up the actual statistics right. It was nowhere near the effects that was having on other communities 
versus our community. Right. And I, I still have all the stats from those sites. And so when we think about the, you know, uh, even the plagues in Exodus, the purpose of those plagues was to make um, to bring separation between Yah's people and the Egyptians, right? So, uh, and Yah made a promise saying that all of Israel was going to make it through, and that they were not going to lose any of their substances. But the key is, all of Israel, including um, within the um, Israel and the Egyptians, had to deal with judgment that was coming. But the Passover, Pasach. The key to that was the Most High was going to hesitate, skip judgment of his people and allow us to have another opportunity, you know, for a future judgment. You know what I mean? So when we start looking at the Passover that's coming up, you know, because technically today is the renewing of the moon, right? right? A new new year for Israel. So think about how all of this is happening right now, Mm -hmm. you know, going right into Pasach and making us reminding us of of christ Mm. you know what i mean it's like wow you know he i mean when you start seeing the harmony of the prophecies uh and seeing how it all comes together one thing we can say is that even though those may have already um honored passover at a different time Mm -hmm. but the key is more and more people are making an assertive effort to honor it right you, I think you even brought up to me how pa- a pastor, some churches are talking about honoring Passover after <laughs> they just honor Resurrection Sunday. <laughs> right, right. Yep. Yep. That, they know which one's right, Pastor Kelly. They yeah. know which one's right. They just don't tell their, um, you know, their followers, you know, which which one's the right one. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So, so it's an interesting time, family. And that's why, uh, you know, Benaya and myself, we... When we deal with prophecy, we try not to get caught up in the, like what a lot of uh, groups that are out there. They'll take advantage with uh, how they interpret scripture. We, we we're clear to make it. We're clear to say that we're not saying that the world is coming to an end or certain things. You know, we're not saying that the earth is going to open up. We're just saying whatever those signs going to be, the Most High has already set aside those those signs, and we're going to know it when we see it. You know, yep. and um, it's man, I, I just can't wait to even as we experiencing the signs of Christ coming back. Mm. I mean, because he said the signs, we'll see the signs bef- of his return. Right. Oh, right. man. Can you imagine that? Because we, we're, I, I believe we're, we're transitioning to that period of seeing the signs, especially when we look at this, uh, this eclipse here. Yeah, I do. Yeah, and that's why I think like today, uh, Pastor Kelly, I think it is it is a historic day. I, you know, it, it it may feel normal, like a normal day. You you look around and you see the, the birds outside like they usually are. You see the, you know, <laughs> the squirrels running around like they normally do. But today is it's like aside from that family, it is a historic day. I mean, we just had that olive and the Tav written across the U.S. And that's I got the uh, the map up. And you can see on the bottom right hand corner, it's like, you know, we're that time is, is done, family. It's like if you're, you know, if you're thinking about you picture the, the most high having his pen and 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 signing it up, signing off on it. It's like, you know, the pen's done. Like the signature's done. The mark is made. This is it. So where and, we go from here? Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Pastor. No, and to your point, because the, the extra the additional letter letter I want to add to it, mm-hmm. uh in the in the Israeli, they call it the kuf. And the, and the ancient Hebrew is the quap, but that that circle with the line that goes through it, that's the that's the quap, right? And it means uh, horizon. It means balance. And when you look at it from the ancient uh, images, it's actually a dial. So think about what you just pointed out about the ah and the tha, and take the circle and place it around at the center of that cro- uh, where it's crossing, and then look at how the lines pass through, it's going to look just like that letter. And when we start looking at that dial, then you start seeing even more uh, uh, rev- um, how scripture lines up with it in terms of when Israel came out of Egypt. It wasn't during the day. It was it was at the height, just past the height of the night. You know what I mean? Uh 
to where uh, full moon, you know, and they were able to come out with, you know, with, with, with light in the desert. So that letter, uh, if you if you get a chance, and you'll see what I'm saying when you see the ancient pictograph of it. Uh, the numerical value is 100 mm-hmm. and you'll see uh, the dial. The ancient has the line going all the way through it. So if you put a, zi- a, a circle over the end in- where, where it intersects, as far as the intersection of the two lines, you'll see it looks just like uh, that letter. Wow. Well, family, I mean, we are in historic times. We are in historic times. I, I just can't yeah. can't say that enough. And it's like, um, uh, and I, I know we've, you know, when we had our, our 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 guest on, you know, pretty much everyone said the same thing, family. It's like, it is time to turn back to the most high. You know, if yeah. you haven't uh, been one to observe or try to observe a feast day, now might be a good time to try. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, uh, uh, figure out how to observe pa- Pesach and, and unleavened bread and all that good stuff, family. You know, I'm not sure, Pastor Kelly, if you guys have a public Publix grocery store up there, but we have uh, grocery stores that where you can get unleavened unleavened bread at. Uh, it actually comes in different flavors and stuff like that, but um, yeah, do you, do you guys have a, have a Publix up, up your way, Pascal? Yeah, we we do, and um, what yeah. we what we're doing in our assembly, they actually, um, my wife, she's gonna make some because um, oh, okay. uh, she got a nice book on um, different types of bread, mm-hmm. so she's gonna make some. Um, you know, here and others are making some for our upcoming uh, celebration. So yeah, we we're, we're actually making some from from scratch. Nice. All right, we'll just make some collard greens to go along with it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> collard greens and black yeah. eyed peas, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And family, just to Benaya's point, though, um, as long as we have breath, we have an opportunity. You know, as long as you're breathing, you have an opportunity to get it right. You know, and that's why we're not knocking those that are have done it early or whatever the case may be, because they made an, they, they're making an effort to honor. You know, this is like just like here, we don't get caught up with names and all that because we all making a, a, an assertive effort to get back to that original place, which the scripture talks about Zephaniah. He's going to cleanse up our language to get starting with our heart. So if if you uh, in the Richmond area and you would like to uh, be part of our uh, Pasak, feel free to uh, reach out uh, because we'll be doing it. And um only thing we just say, hey, just give us a heads up uh, and the, everything is free. We don't we don't charge anything. We never done done that before. So everything is free. Bring an appetite and just uh, be ready to celebrate. Hallelujah. All right, family. Well, I know we're, we're getting close to the end, family. And, um, you know, just to kind of wrap up on the um, the theme of, of turning back to the most high. The mark has been made. This we have witnessed this historic date of of you know this this X this uh, uh, this Alpha and uh, Aleph and Tav being written across the, the U.S. and now like you know I forgot who made the comment in the chat but it is on <laughs> it is on where we go from here you know who knows but it is on from here but as far as we're concerned like you, you were saying like Pastor Kelly was saying like our, our guests were saying we're gonna turn back to the Most High and um. I want to play a, a video from you, at least a song. Uh, it's not a, a full, um, I'm going to say like a music music video, but it, it, this is a song by our our, our sister in the walk. Uh, uh, I think it's Oil of Joy. And uh, definitely family, uh, I think after you hear this, you'll want to go in and uh, check it out. I think it, it is available on, on iTunes. But one of the things I started doing, family, is I wanted to, I started studying to, better learn, you know, the, the, the customs and the, you know, the things of Israel. Like, you know, when our, our, our forefathers came out of Egypt, they came, you know, to the foot of the, of the burning mountain. Right. And we got our, our law, statutes and commandments. But what you may not know family is that we also, we also receive other things in, in addition to that. Like when the most high gave us instructions about, I call it, I call it H, you know, the most high HGTV, <laughs> you know, he showed us, 
you know, how he wanted at the, at the time, like how he wanted the tabernacle built, like what colors and stuff like that. And what I was surprised at was like the most high has a, has a color scheme going on here. And I, I think, um, and it's, it's, it's one of those things where if you kind of picture yourself jumping into a time machine and going back to, you know, to the time of, of Mount Sinai and the time of the, the wandering around in the wilderness, you would literally see a color scheme, just kind of like, you know, you got the Pittsburgh Steelers and everybody knows like, you know, the black and yellow or, you know, the New England, the Patriots, right? You know, the, the blue and the white and the red and just just certain color schemes, you you know, automatically, if, if you guys are football fans, you know, you know, like certain teams just pop into mind, like the the orange and the black. You know, you think of the, the Bengals, right? Well, Israel had a color scheme during that time. Now, I haven't done the finished the complete study of it to, to know if that color scheme carried all the way through. But what I did, what I have discovered, family, is when you go back and you look at the historical pictures, you see that Israel still had uh, still adhered to the color scheme. So before we get get into that family, so let me just play this this uh, quick uh, video for you. And again, like I said, the the the, uh, the thought behind this uh, video family is turning back to the Most High. Uh oh, I, I see. Uh, sit the. I'm gonna put your post up here. Purple, blues, and golds. Uh oh. Uh oh. Think you're onto something there. <laughs> but let's check this out first, family.
that I may worship you. You tore the veil that I may worship you. Ooh, hallelujah. You tore the veil. You tore the veil. You tore the veil. You tore the veil. Hallelujah. So definitely family, uh, support, support, support. Uh, sister uh, Joy Lester, uh, tore the veil, tore the veil is the song. So you can uh, get it today at your you know the usual music outlets. But yes, as you can, as you heard, family, it is a beautiful song, beautiful song. But with that, family, I won't keep you long. I know. Uh, th thank you all for hanging out and um, sharing your thoughts and chiming in and keeping the chat active. And thank you, Pastor Kelly, for hopping on and sharing your, your thoughts and wisdom. I always appreciate it. And uh, actually, before we uh, we we end, Pastor Kelly, did you have any any thoughts or comments before we adjourn for today? I just want to encourage everyone, just stay focused, you know, keep the main thing, the main thing. And um, as we uh, say at our assembly, can't go back, can't stay here, keep moving forward. Uh, so just just embrace the signs uh, and, um, you know, just stay focused and continue to do the things that the most other the things that the most I require of us. Uh, I yield. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, thank you again. Oh, Pastor Kelly. uh Want to give information about your channel? Anything you have coming up? Uh, this weekend, uh, well, still doing the teachings on the um, the calendar, how to re reconstruct the calendar. So I'll be doing teachings on that Thursday. Uh, also, I'll be teaching on the red heifer, uh, giving cl clarity on that. Even uh, you know, on um, this uh, upcoming Friday, this is going to be Friday or Saturday. So those are the two things that we have going on this week. Uh, and, um, you know, if you guys are interested in, um, our ministry, feel free to reach out to me. We woke now, or we are woke now is my Gmail, uh, account, but that's what we have on the near, uh, near future. We have that this week. And of course the, um, uh, Passover and the feast of unleavened bread, which we're going to celebrate next week. So that's all I have. Appreciate it. Awesome. Yep. So uh, I guess to kind of land back on what you were talking about, Pastor Kelly. So as far as uh, upcoming videos, family, um, I'm not necessarily sure what the title is going to be, but the you know the subject matter is going to be about you know the the t the tabernacle and like the design of the tabernacle. Just to just to kind of get some insight into the Most High's design um, and his you know when he decided to uh, you know have a place. Uh, built for his dwelling like you know what what did he come up with you know just kind of like looking into that as well as you know some of the uh well just taking a look at that we'll <laughs> we'll see what comes comes out of that teaching but we'll do that uh family most high willing not sure if that'll come out this week but um sometime soon and then um like i said family as far as like the uh, african israelite justice foundation please if you if you haven't uh had a chance to sign the petition and actually let me see if i can grab that that link here. So just give me one minute, family. I'm going to see if I can grab the link uh, for those of you all that are still interested in signing the petition, because what we'll do, or at least what the plan is, is um, we will submit that. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll kind of cut it off this uh, this Friday and we'll take that and then we'll submit that to the Department of, of, of Justice. And I think I got the link right here. All right, got it, family. And I'm gonna just paste it in the chat. So we'll just say this is the uh, uh, African While you're typing that in, cuz mm -hmm. can I make a, a quick announcement to the people? Sure, sure. Go ahead. All right. If anyone wants to, I'm going to be auctioning 
my magneto cap here if you want to want this anyone that wants it i'm going to auction it <laughs> off no i'm just joking <laughs> <laughs> yeah you wrote you're on point with it with your uh your magneto hat <laughs> pass <a> killer <laughs> <laughs> All right, family. Well, hey, family, th thanks again for dialing in. And as always, family, hey, thank you all for your support. Really appreciate it, family. Uh, for those of you who are interested in support, just check out the uh, description. Got uh, support links in there as well. But as always, thank you. Thank you always for your support. Thank you, family, for sharing these videos. Uh, you guys really make it worthwhile uh, to uh, to help put these things together. Just a fellowship with you all uh, to hear your thoughts as well, family. So really love you, uh, Ms. Perka. And I guess that's it. We will. We are out of here and uh, we will see you next week. Most I will. Hallelujah.